You're watching the Real Things Session. contain myself I, I don't shoot I have so many things I want to talk about with y'all um honestly I know I told y'all I was gonna talk about I forgot what I was gonna talk about I told y'all I was gonna talk about stuff from last week but I've kind of been reevaluating re myself and you know from watching the have and have nots shout out to Ty Perry for that uh I've been thinking I've been losing my way Sorry, I'm trying to make myself look a little good, I guess you could say. Oh, the color is kind of off. But anyway, I've, I've been reevaluating myself and I've been trying to figure out wh what am I missing? Because, see, each season I want to have something different. And for this season, which I don't know how plan how many plans I had, how many episodes I have planned for this season, maybe 30. Uh, I'm no, I know for sure it's not going to be over 40 episodes uh, for one season. Um, so I just keep on doing them until I decided to change up but this season i my main goal is to to reach the heart of families so if there's a topic on each episode that you guys feel like i didn't address to the extent it's because i specifically am addressing the families so if you need me to go into further depth with that just let me know and i will get back to that most likely next week and i'm sorry about the banging it's because it's fourth of july of course come tomorrow so that's why I'm happy, I guess. <laughs> but happy Fourth of July to everyone. But uh, I, whatever I was gonna talk about last week that I told you guys I was gonna talk about this week, I'll talk about next week. I promise. I just need to go over my notes. But um, I want to talk about several things. That okay. Um, first thing I want to say pertaining to Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Um, you guys need to go see The Purge. The Purge is funny. It's good. It's sad to say that I heard a rumor that it's going to be the last one. But I hope that they make another one. But I'm not sure with that. But go out and see The Purge. I have my little notes to keep on track. Uh, I also want to congratulate Jill Scott on her marriage. Uh, I already posted a video that you guys can watch. It's like a 30 minute video. Like, no, not 30 minutes, a three minute video, three to four minute video of Joe Scott's pictures and weddings, and it has background music. It's just like a little something to congratulate her. And um, I also want you guys to ch uh, keep in tune for my Periscope sessions. You guys can follow me on Periscope uh, at Arbier Vassal, and, um, or you can just wait till they come on YouTube to see the videos. And then, I believe that's. Oh, I was going to. For some damn reason, I totally forgot about Gay Pride last week. For some reason, 
I mean, I saw the YouTube videos, but I just so my mind was so wrapped around. A, my mind was lost last week, and for some damn reason, I just totally forgot about it. So I wanted to have a gay pride to all the people and you know celebrate that. I know it's still late, but I mean it's still kind of the week of gay pride if you want to think about it. Um, I also want to. Oh, I, I wish I was in. Oh damn, man! I wish I was. I wish at the. I wish I was at the SMU's festival in New Orleans, but I've seen a lot of tweets. I'm keeping up with it, so I'm. I'm. I'm I, I wish I was down there for Fourth of July weekend, but. It's kind of sad I wasn't. Um, I wish I was in Vegas, though, because they actually have the, like, you know, like, where the fire, the, um, the, uh, like, you know how they do the fireworks for the 4th of July, where it all lines up, and they do, they actually do it the night of, of the night before 4th of July, so the 3rd. So I wish I was there for that, but, you know, Vegas can't be choosers. But anyway, let's get into some real talk. Now, I'm, see, I keep up with the latest as you guys will soon enough, okay? But the thing is, is I technically don't keep up, keep up. And what I mean by that is I keep up to a certain extent because I'm not all about the, I am, I do do drama, but I only allow drama to come to me first before I deal with it. But I want to talk about this Tamar thing when she got fired from the room. I know probably a few weeks late, if not months late, but y'all will catch on to me, I promise you. Because there's a there's a meaning for everything. But do y'all like my hair? I'm sorry, I have to mention that. I look, I think I look good. It says college on it. There's a college shirt I got, and then I have my little a scarf that I got. This is from Ross. Trust me, Ross. I, look, don't don't. Hey, I ain't shaming. I go to the thrift store. I go to I go to Hobby Lobby. I go to to uh, Dollar Tree. I go to yes, Dollar Tree has some nice socks. I, or some nice gloves. I also let's see. I had got a scarf. Let me let me show y'all. I, I, I'm not trying to get off track. Let me look at my drawer because I have my dresser drawers right here. So let me just look. There is a freaking. There's so many things I got from Hobby Lobby. I mean from uh. Where is that damn? Oh, look at these scarves. I I got these scarves from Dollar Tree. I'm not in, I'm not ashamed in my game. I go to Dollar Tree. I go to Family Dollar. I go to Hobby Lobby. I go to Ross. I go everywhere for clothes because what? Fashion is everywhere. And you may call me cheap, broke. Yes, I am broke. I'm looking for a job. But so what? Whatever makes me look good, even if it is cheap. But anyway, not to get off track. Um, I just want to. And I also got these earrings from a, a hospital. Yes, I shop at the hospital too. The gift stores have very... I got this nice jewelry. This little rhinestone necklace from the hospital. If y'all need me to... I promise you. If y'all need me to tell y'all where to shop. I, I'm telling you. I will show you my clothes. I got good stuff. Stuff that was on sale for four ninety nine. Shirts, shorts, the whole damn night. I even go to Goodwill. But one thing I gotta tell you, wash that stuff before you wear it. Because you don't know what's up in there. Yes, they say they wash it, but you never know. You never know. But anyway, let's get back to some real talk. Back to the same thing. A lot has been going on, and it's still going on, you know. Um, and I feel bad for Tamar because they it's kind of like they ambushed her and treated her with so total disrespect, especially after the year they had. It's like they beat her down. It's like they slowly but surely was beating her down. They allowed her to come back, and then they just kicked her off the show. You know what I mean? And all that bull... Look, if you don't want your kids watching this, you're going to know that I'm a cuss, so I'm going to just say how I feel. If you... If you... It's it's bullshit. Because they really basically was just bringing her back, and then just to tell her, look, girl, you got fired. They actually gave her a phone call and fired her. You know, that's the most unprofessional thing to do. And then Lonnie Love went on to Wendy Williams, and this was a week back I saw this interview, or like this, you know, going on. She got on, uh, you know, to Wendy Williams, and Wendy, Will Wendy asked her, you know, how's it going at the real? So then that's when she just said, oh, everything's going perfectly fine. Alex, uh, what are you doing? You know, it, it was... 
She so it was like she went on Wendy Williams and just Wendy Williams asked, like I said, she just asked and said, "How's it going at the real at, at the real?" And she said, "We've been we we we've been renewed for our third or fourth season, whichever season it was, or I think she just said it don't matter. It's just I know that they're on their like third or fourth season, and they've got renewed for another season. Everything's fine. Blindy Love got on there and completely lied to millions of viewers. So then that's when we the the I guess the so." Then that's when a couple of days later, that's when... See, the rumors have been spreading around. But see, they weren't that big until after Lonnie Love got on to Wendy Williams' show. That's when all the drama, like the biggest, because that's when Tamar... It started to come about that Tamar was being fired. But see, one thing... Because I watched the Braxton Family Values. So, hey, y'all, the Braxtons, and hey, Tamar. Um, so, I was watching the Braxton Family Values. And see, when you are on a reality, reality TV show, they tape, they film you. And they tape you, and then you edit. You help edit with executive producers and everything. And then they showed up the the, the, the the following year. So that way they could show what happened the previous year. So it seems to me that Tamar found out that she got fired from The Real a year ago. And then all these rumors, quote-unquote rumors, got found about. Because, it, see, it all started from when Tamar had made an Instagram post saying, you know, I'm going to be off Instagram, off all social media for a while. I can't believe they stabbed me in the back, quote-unquote, this and that and the third, and it wasn't my sister's. It was, and then we could all, we, the only people we could think that was close enough, the closest to her sisters that are females, was the co-host on The Real. So, I'm like, okay, I'm not really sure. People are, all these people, all of her fans are speculating, but I'm not the type of speculate. I need to trust, but verify. You know, so I was like, okay, well, I'll just keep on along with this story. So then that's when, after that post, that's when the rumors start to spread about, but I'm like, what? So I'm like, these gotta be rumors, because I couldn't really believe this was true. So that's when more rumors, because see, the way I found out was because of the, like, when you go on your YouTube page and you click on the app, and then it shows up all the stuff that you want to watch, or things that may, that may be interesting to you. So, are they recommend to you? So, I, I didn't really watch any of them because I didn't really hear what people had to say or what Lonnie had to say. So, that's when I was like, okay, maybe this is true. Then that's when I watched The Breakfast Frame Values. And that's when they just, show, I'm like, damn, so she really got fired. So, then after, so, so now, now, um, as I got my mind right, after watching the clip, after watching the episode where Lonnie Love deliberately told Wendy that everything was fine. She then told, then that's when all the rumors came about. So then that's when Lonnie Love uh, made a video, and I think it got, it was on, it, either it got leaked, leaked, or his, her friend posted it on the internet, and it got on YouTube, and I watched the video, she's like, I, she would, she did the white girl thing. Oh my gosh. Like, well, this is how I preview her. I love you, Lonnie, but this is how you sound to me. Oh my gosh, I, this was basically what she sounded like to me, which was bullshit. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that Tamar got fired. We love her so, so much. I mean, you know, we she did the photo shoot for the season three. I didn't know that any of this was going to happen. This, that, and the third. Bunch of ass excuses. And I'm like, girl. And she was like, and she was like, I, look. And then, because Wendy Williams stated that, you know, she had to, the co-hosts have some say in who they choose as their co-host and whether or not they can be fired. It's not just the executive producers. So Lonnie Love went on and on on Rampage about, oh my gosh, well, I don't have the control over firing her. I mean, we're all best friends. We love one another. Boo-boo, get your lies right. Because she stopped, but I even checked my damn self. And Tamara follows a lot of people. She stopped following everybody except for Tamara on Instagram. And, and as I know, they're still in contact with each other. And so, Lonnie Love is, oh my gosh, I didn't know about this. Girl, quit lying. I may not be in the business, but I'm trying to get into the business, okay? I'm trying to get my PhD in business, music, arts, and crafts, and writing, and humane letters, and stuff like that. But I do know business. And I know, I know the white man's world. You have to play by their game to get what you want. So... I believe y'all had some say in the firing, but see, the main part that got him on fire was because I heard that they said that she wasn't, like, she wasn't good for advertising. The advertisers didn't like her, and she wasn't really, she, not that she was appealing, but her pers overall personality of, like, do his lip smacking and, oh my gosh, and you tried it and all that stuff. And it was basically the things that she was doing disrespectful to the production team. She was disrespectful to the co-host. She was disrespectful behind the scenes, and she wasn't appealing, quote-unquote appealing, as the white man want to put it, for advertisers. Or I guess, you know, it wasn't working out. So that's why they fired her. And honestly, that's when I started to hear that Tamar's, 
t the Tay Martian friends were going rampage. They went on top Lonnie's Twitter page and cussed her out. And look, I gotta say from a standpoint, I love Tamar. I love you, I, and I love you too, Lonnie. But I know Tamar longer than I know you, Lonnie. So I'm gonna choose Tamar of this. And it's not about loyalty. It's just the fact of the matter is, is you. I don't care what you say. You are part of the production. The co-hosts are the production. So you have some say so in what goes down on episodes and what y'all gonna talk about and what you don't like and what you dislike. And I believe that y'all went to this upper management and told them about this. And then they already said, well, oh, the advertisers don't like her, so y'all don't like her. Okay, let's just kick her off the show. And then they fired her. So I believe it was an all combustion of y'all, the co-host, getting her fired and then the advertisement already not liking her. So... Boo, BS to you, Lonnie. You talk about, oh my gosh, I don't know. I didn't have, I didn't have nothing to do with that because, yes, you do. You get a check just like Tamar is. So you definitely going to put in the word. You, go, you black, and I know the motto. She messing with my money? Uh-uh. I'm black. She ain't going to mess with my money. Watch. And then this is what happened. But you know what? I don't care if, look, all I got to say is, is nobody deserves to get cussed out on Twitter. But if you... But we all know what goes on behind the scenes, and I do believe some part that Lonnie, you had a lot to do with getting her fired as long as with other co-hosts. I'm not just blaming, pointing fingers at you, but you the one that's speaking out that I've seen about this. And it's only it's been honestly on the new it's been on only on tabloids and stuff. Lonnie versus Tamar versus Lonnie, and knowing that the other co-stars have come about to even speak upon this. So, I honestly am only talking to you. And I believe that you weren't the only one that was in involved in getting Tamar fired, but you don't want speaking out. And honestly, yes, nobody deserves to get cussed out, but I believe you had some part in it, so you deserve a little bit to get cussed out. And that's all I got to say about that. Now, back to Tamar. I'm, I'm so happy for you. Steve Harvey, you are the man. Right hand, right hand to the man, God. Tamar got a, a job. I, I, I'm not sure what the job is. If he got a, like a, gave her a show. Or it was she's being going to be part of his show, and I'm not sure if it's going to be a radio talk show or an actual talk show. Um, but he he's giving her a job, and um, I, I pray that that goes well for you because you know you, Tamar needs something just for Tamar, and I I heard that this is only going to be Tamar on this, nobody else, and I feel that that's what Tamar needs. She needs just to, you know. And honestly, if honestly I want a talk show, and that's why I really don't want nobody else on my talk show but me. Because at the end of the day, I don't want nobody to be like, I don't want to have no speculations. I don't do that shit where I jump around, well, did she do this? Did she do that? I'm like, look, did you do this or not? And, and that's how it goes, you know. And I'm not the type to beat around the bush. You let me know if you have a problem. And I believe that Lonnie had a problem with her. Because I've seen some clips where Tamar is pissed off some of the co-stars where they were taping in the, in the episodes that aired. They kind of had to roll their eyes and roll their eyes and stuff. And, you know, that's just the way it is. And I feel that you know, they all had a part in getting Tamar fired, including Tamara. But even though Tamara and her still talk, I believe that. I believe that because I noticed a lot when they talked about the kid, when they talked about topics on kids and stuff like that. Everybody like they put Tamara and Tamar by each other because they were mothers, I believe. And then everybody else, they didn't have either. They didn't even have a man in the beginning. Or they did, or they didn't have any kids, and there was a lot. I believe that that's where the 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 content to drift started to just started to cause an earthquake and then split apart the sin, and the, that's where the San Andreas just started to split apart because they were all about, you know, Lonnie was all about drinking her beer and going out and partying and having all types of men and stuff, and then she, um, uh, Adrian, she was wanting just a husband. And no kids, maybe a kid or two. And then freaking Je Jeannie, my, she was just, you know, all of just having her man to herself and going out and partying. And then Tamara and Tamar were family, like, as far as when it comes to their their mindset, you know. So I, did, I believe that's where it caused the drifting from there. That's when everything just started to fall out. I'm not sure about the disrespect from Tamar. I believe Tamar maybe could have been a little bit hard to deal with because Tamar is a, obnoxious a lot. I ain't gonna lie about that, Tamar. You obnoxious you're obnoxious and you do play a role in getting yourself fired from a job whether you may think it or not and i mean you are somewhat the cause of your own demise in a way but that's all i gotta say about that now moving on because i know i've talked about that for the last 15 minutes anyway i want to talk about i want to talk about uh, uh the the 
one thing I want to talk about that is kind of a little bit of dep- back to family is fighting and then there's a family member that dies. And then also I'm talking about lying and sticking together in a family that prays together, stays together, and stop ad- antagonizing one another. And we're gonna, we're then we're, we're gonna, I'm going to close up by talking about ancestors. The first thing I want to talk about is when, see, I watched this TV show called Queers of Folk, Queer as Folk. It was a TV show that aired from 2000 to 2005. I kind of, when I become a, 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 when I create my own network channel, I want to, uh, or my TV channel, I want to bring that back, but, um, you know, talk about today's stuff. But anyway, there was an episode where the, um, Debbie, that's the character's name, Debbie, I don't know, I forgot her real name, but Debbie and her brother, Vic, and he's gay, had HIV. But anyway, they got into an argument and he died. After they had an argument. Now, we all have our, um, we go through the motions and the oceans when it comes to grieving. And we all have our different ways of grieving. And so, she, some, see, for a state of shock for me, I've had dogs that died, ferrets, pets, everything. And I've never cried for not seen one. And I haven't really had a family member that died. I mean, there's people in my family that have died, but I weren't around. If not, I was young to not know that it happened. You know, so the honestly, the the recent one that, uh, that person that died in my family was my grandfather, and he died. Or no, not the recent. My recent was my aunt that died last year. But I don't. Oh, I haven't really talked to her because is I last time I talked to her was when I was a baby, and it's not that my family is estranged with her. It's just you know we are here in Denver and they're down there in Texas, and of course in Texas, so we're you know, and we you know. We have our lives, and, and it's not that, it's not an excuse. But anyway, um, I've had two people in my family that died recently. My grandfather died back in the 90s, and then my, um, and he served in the in the war, and he was president of schizophrenic. Um, rest in peace, grandfather. Wish I was, wish he was around so I could meet you. Um, but anyway, and then my aunt died last year, and I, I, I'm not really affected by death. You know, I guess I'm just prepared for it automatically. But anyway, she, um, back to Vic and Debbie. They had an argument, and she said, you know, something of the nature, you know, I, I, I would be fine if I never see you again, and fuck you, and this, that, and the third. And then he died. And she, when he died, I, her problem was the fact that he died. It was the fact that she had an argument and said those rude things, and she wished she could take him back or she could say sorry to him. And see, that's what affected her. And I just want to say, when you have an argument, and if you, if your family family member does die or not, I pray they don't. We all know that in the heat of the moment, you say things that you don't mean. And we also know that you are sorry, even though you may not say it. And when you have, if you do have a family member that has died, forgive yourself. Move on. Because if that person was still on this earth right now, they would be looking at you telling you, hey, get your ass up out that damn chair. I know we had a damn argument, but suck it up. But your, your feelings are all out in the open. Stuck, put, uh, stuff them back in, okay? I, we were in the heat of the moment. We argued. That's what love people, love people. If people, if you love someone and you're not arguing, you don't really love them because that means your life is quixotic and there's no such thing as quixotic, perfect world, okay? So if y'all ain't arguing, it's not that you don't love each other. It's just that y'all don't have an honest, true relationship. That means that y'all think that everything's peaches and cream when everything's not peaches and cream. But anyway... Look, if you guys have an argument whether or not your family member dies, we all know they may the person may be like, You don't you mean what you meant what you said unless they have pure evil hate like Candace off of having have nots towards Hannah or her mother. But if y'all just arguing in the heat of the moment, spare the moment, apologize. Even if they're dead, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for you. Because at the end of the day you gonna beat yourself up about it. And they going your family. If your family member was here there today to tell you, and yes, I know those were your last words, and you wish those weren't your last words you said to him or her. You know, it's okay. Just forgive yourself for you, so that way you can allow yourself to forgive yourself and move forward and know that you did not mean those things, especially if you don't. And I know you wish they were there to say that were there was you were sorry to them, but they know you're sorry. Because they're still alive. They're just not here on this earth to say so, you know. But forgive yourself and love yourself and know that you're going to say things in the you know, heat of the moment that's not going to always be pleasant, you know. That's that's a bougie person and I don't like bougie people. 
Anyway, um, I want to talk about lying. Oh, God. We live in a world that is lying. And next week, I'm going to be talking about Hillary Clinton and her lying and being investigated by the FBI. But moving forward, I'm going to be also talking about North Korea and Japan and this war. They're talking about war and building these new missiles and stuff. I'll talk about that all next week. But lying. I ain't going to lie. I lied before. Everybody lies before. Or it will lie eventually. You know, it, we live in a world today that everybody, I feel that a lot of people in the world, they feel that if they go, if they, yeah, what's, I just don't feel like, why in the world, if people, it's like people are so afraid to tell the truth. Like, if you tell the truth, somebody's going to die or somebody's mouth is going to fall up, their vocal cords going to just, uh, you know, spontaneously just converse and shut off. You know, I, I just see what's wrong with telling the truth. Telling the truth like it is, you know, being honest with one another. I mean, that's the whole point of a sphere, have freedom of speech. And I just feel that the lying, you know, it's like, what is so wrong with the truth in this world? And it's not just the fact of the saying that this saying goes, the truth shall set you free. It's just the fact of it's, why don't you just tell the truth and let it be what it's going to be? And I just feel that people are afraid to just tell, not afraid to tell the truth. It's just that they... What's wrong with telling the truth and being honest and just laying it out there on the line and let it be what it's going to be and, you know, have it at, have at it. And I just feel sometimes people just, <sighs> people just think that telling the truth is more of a sin than telling the damn lie. People will tell the lie when the truth is due and some people will tell the truth when the lie is due. <laughs> and I know that you're talking about I'll be here stop lying, but you get the point of what I'm trying to say. I, I just feel just try to minimize the lying. It's never gonna stop because this that's what the white man's world is, I mean, or not even white man's world. It's just a black world in general. It's just a, I mean, just not a black world. It's just a world in general that we live in, which is sad. And that brings me to the next point of stop. A family that prays together, prays together, stay together. If you if you and your family are able to it's and it's not technically the lines of if a family prays together they stay together it's not that the word pray does not mean just pray they mean loving one another truthfully being honest you know being spontaneous being crazy knowing when to fall back and when to come up when to calm down and when to come up you know if you're able to maintain that and have a high I call it a uh, induced hormonal imbalance for your family. If you're able to con control that and more uh, uh, that hormonal effect and level, you will be able to live that life that is good for you. Um, also, th and that was that's what's gonna cause y'all to stick together. And if y'all are antagonizing one another, it, it, it those hormonal imbalances get fluctuated. It's like a pregnant lady. A pregnant lady has cravings when you don't fulfill those cravings men or you know women don't it's 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 when those those cravings don't get fulfilled the baby gets pissed off then that makes the mother angry and then that's when she gets an, an, an angry and antagonizing and annoying as hell it's it's just same way when it comes to family families are like hormone levels you have to find out what feeds into your family correctly to keep that hormonal not imbalanced but balanced enough you know and, and that's what it is. Now, closing to this statement, I'm going to also talk about uh, cancer next week or the following week after. I will let you keep guys updated with next week. But anyway, I want to talk about ancestors and respecting their fight, what they fought for and what they built for you. And it speaks to kind of like what uh, uh, Tyler Perry's movie, um, Medea's Family Reunion. What happened to loving one another? Your ancestors, and it's the, it, it, your ancestors have fought for y'all to, to be the best y'all can be. And y'all revert back to what they haven't done, but what the white man has done, and to influencing our brains. And what I mean by that is, is the ancestors that were before you fought. Even if they weren't beat, even if they were beaten and raped, they fought for your freedom. They fought for you to do things that they couldn't do so that they can look upon look upon you guys and see that you guys are a good reflection of them and 
you know, and I'm talking specifically about black people. You guys are practicing shooting each other every single day. You didn't see black people doing that back then. And then you could probably be like, well, they didn't have the control back then because the white man was in charge and they were getting beaten already by the white man. So that's why they didn't do it. Oh, boo-hoo. It's not the fact of that. You don't see when they were run away from being runaway slaves. Did you see them beating each other, trying to escape? No. They were helping one another to get freedom Go when they were going to Canada. And it's not even just that. It's just the fact of it is, is the main point is, is you got, when you guys, and I'm specifically talking about black people, you guys are disrespecting your ancestors when you are killing each other every day, practicing killing each other every day, doing things that cause them to be known for being monkeys and niggers and, you know, you know, part of the monkey kingdom, you know, it's just too much. Try to move that on up out of the way and allow yourself to breathe and, you know, breathe and feel. That, But that's all I got to say about that because ancestors fought for us and I would be damned if I call someone a nigga or a nigger. Because to me, they're both the same, even if they have different spellings. That's like saying, that's basically saying, there, there, there. There's three different theirs. Even though they do mean different things, they're actually somewhat similar to another. So it's, it's, I just feel, you know, some I don't like disrespecting my ancestors. And ancestors don't mean just people from slave times. I'm meaning my grandfather. My grandfather was an army man, you know. And my mother, she grew up on a, um, I forgot what you call it, not a dock. But you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. She grew up on a, well, on army, army bases, that's what they call them. So I'm a, I, my family's somewhat an army a little bit. So I, it's not just the fact of it, I respect that. I respect the fact that they fought for my freedom. And it's not just slavery. It's our people from the army. And it, it's not just your ancestors specifically. Other families' ancestors that have paved the way for you. So just, I'm going to let you saute on that a little bit, you know? Let you uh, mar uh, soothe in that marinara sauce. How about that? But that's all I gotta say. Um, but make sure, um, but I, that's all I gotta say for to, for this week. But make sure y'all go see The Purge. Make sure y'all check out my Periscope videos. I'll, they'll be coming on soon. Uh, the first episode I'm gonna be talking about is, um, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the Army transgender thing. I'm gonna be talking about uh, the, where they're allowing a transgender to come in. I'll be talking about um, Hillary Clinton a little bit, Donald Trump, Obama, um, but at all, but tomorrow I'm gonna be having I'm gonna be on Periscope um, around maybe nine in the morning talking about um, uh, Fourth of July. I will be posting these uh, the Periscope videos on YouTube, so you guys check those out. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Javier Vassal. Um, and also uh, next week I will be talk. I know I've already been like telling you guys what I'm gonna talk about next week, but next week for sure I'm gonna be talking about North Korea, some new missiles. Japan talking about going to war. I'm going to also be talking about um, um, Hillary Clinton's lies. Um, I'm going to talk about... I'm so sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm just so... <laughs> uh, and then I, the, the last thing I'm going to talk about also cancer uh, within families and, you know, going to get checked out. And I also want to talk about the HIV movement. And the biggest thing I want to talk about for the next week, because I believe it's going on in our world, is when... I'm not trying to get racial, but when African Americans that are poor see their rich African American people doing something that they they feel like they need to just sit back and just let them do all the work and they do nothing, you know, because the, the real change starts within the community where the problem is. I'm going to talk about that more and basically foundations. And it has a lot to do with the speech that Jesse Williams, I believe his name is, from BET. They, a lot of people are talking about that. But to end on this note, Jill Scott, congratulations on your marriage, girl. Girl, you look fine in that dress. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. I'm mad you got married again. I was so hoping you was going to get married again. It's not that the fact that I'm not happy for I'm not wanting happiness for you. It's because I wanted to marry you. But I guess a 16-year-old can't marry a, a sexy, hot 43-year-old. 42. I get your age wrong because, honestly, I don't care about your age because you look like a 20-year-old to me. And girl, your dress looks beautiful. 
your bosom. I showed my mom your pictures of you, girl. My mom was like, dang, it looks like her boob about to pop out, but she got some mm, up in there. And y'all go, I'm not sure if Jessica still has those, speaking of boobs, and I'm not trying to get off track. Go check out Jessica Butterfly Bra. I'm not sure if she still does that, the Butterfly Bra thing, but if y'all do, go try to check it out. For all the girls that have a lot of bosom. And stuff, you know, go go check that out. But I think again, let's get off track. Congratulations, Joe Scott, on the um, new marriage. Your son is beautiful. He looks just like you. It's like he's a little twin of you. And uh, I'm so happy for the number one album. It's still doing good. Uh, I wish you would. I, I, I'm I'm just wondering if you've been coming. I wonder if you've been coming to Denver because I really want to see you here in Denver. I pray that you do. And congratulations to Andre Day for the uh, uh, being the. Uh, a headline I'm not a sure a headliner but a performer at the SMS Festival main stage um and happy 4th of July guys I cannot wait to talk to you guys tomorrow morning again at 9 um mountain time so that means Chicago would be 10 and like eastern time like Atlanta and New York and South, North and South Carolina that time frame would be uh 11 and then um an hour behind in like California and Nebraska, uh, no, no, Nevada and all them, and Oregon and Washington and like um, Arizona and New Mexico, that would be 8 a.m. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for that. I thank you guys for watching this Ruthing session again next week. Tune in Sunday, 12 p.m. Don't want to miss it. And don't forget to check me out on my Periscope videos because I can't wait to. And make sure you guys leave a comment below and see what you think. I've been getting some good comments and. Or not good comments. I've been getting some interesting comments that people are starting to take accountability. And so, and so coming this soon will be, um, like I said, this fall poetry session. I'll be also start, start, uh, starting a pillow talk, quote unquote pillow talk. And um, I will be also um, doing a, uh, um, I would say, um, music covers, if you will. And um, you guys will be seeing a lot more of me. And uh, my website is coming soon. I have a, quite a bit to still get done on that, but um, I, my website is coming soon, so you guys can keep track of that. And I'm gonna, uh, try, I'm gonna start. Um, I'm trying to create an app. You know, try to create my own app. But I'm gonna. That's gonna take. That's gonna be about maybe two years down the line. But I'm just letting y'all know what's coming soon, so that way you guys can be prepared. So you guys, thanks for all the love and support, Love Village. Thank you for everything. Oh, I've had amazing months with you guys so far the real thing session is going good i thank you for all the raving reviews on instagram and twitter thank you for all the follows please share this with your family and friends because that's all i want is to help people's lives out and just tell the truth like it is you know but i thank you guys for watching this week's real thing session i can't wait to see you next time peace and love guys